Let's play some realms. Realms is one of the first uh, computer RPGs I played. <laughs> or 96 have a lot of good memories on the very first computer I had a uh, performer 450 and I spent many hours playing realms back then um, so we've got some characters that have already rolled up Synapton is our half elf sorcerer Kiyama is a human crusader Jago is our orc fighter. Zialia is a kobold assassin. Praetor is a leprechaun archer. And Forhan is a, a dwarf priestess. Okay. <laughs> City of Bywater. It's just the included scenario that comes with it. Um, <laughs> very loud noises. Uh, there's not really a, a main plot to it. It's just lots of different things to explore and do. And yeah, we'll see where it takes us. Okay, so we've got a map of. With handy note of the general store. Let's take a look. So banking's good. Banking means that um, if you get weighed down with uh, lots of treasure, um, all the gold pieces and gems and jewels have weights associated with them. And if you carry that around everywhere, it can really uh, limit your movement. It'll uh, start reducing down the number of spaces you can move. So, so banking is a very important tool. More appropriate for, for later in the game when, once you do start to acquire some treasure. But yeah, very cool feature. Now let's take a look at the shop. Okay, so what have we got? Synapton's got a robe, a dagger. Kiyama fitted out with some nice chain armor there, and a long sword. Jago, broadsword. Is that a two handed? I think that's a two handed weapon. Nope. Yeah, must be two handed. Uh, and some leather gear. Right, just a robe. Can they wear leather? Yes, they can wear leather. Hmm. Okay, our archer has leather as well, all leather. And some chain armor for our priestess. Making it padded to how much is that? Three fifty. Okay. Let's see. All together, we've got a thousand and nine gold pieces. Okay. Okay, we've got some spells. How much is this here? Small wounds. 150. That might come in handy. Grab one of those. Um, spells are a bit pricey. Yeah. Might leave them for once we've accumulated some more treasure. Um, I can give him a cloak though, give him a little bit more protection. Okay. 
then now they could use where they couldn't they? That's fifty, yeah. Hmm, I hope that doesn't impede any of their abilities. If it does, I will go back to wearing the robe, so I'll hang on to that for now. Um, and what else comes in handy? Flyers, let's get a rope. Mirror, what would a mirror be for? How much is it? 20? Yeah, I don't think we need it. And it looks like we've got plenty of rations for everyone. Yep, 36. So that's good for now. And torch, yeah, we all have torches. Yeah. Yes, we do. Okay, so here we can see how much the how much movement they have. So I think what we can do is Yeah, that doesn't really impact on their movement, so we'll leave that as it is. Okay. What's up here? This is a temple dedicated to Sestuona, goddess of nature. A portly looking man wearing a green robe approaches and speaks. Welcome travelers to this most holy of temples. If you like, you may partake of our healing skills. I have a feeling I will be partaking of their healing skills at some point during this adventure. Okay. So even little hills are quite extensive. Glad we've got our priestess who can do that for us. Uh, healing poison, removing cursed items, reviving dead. Okay. Hopefully we won't have to use any of those for a while. Okay, bye. Let's go. You greet a passing wizard who smiles warmly at you. You strike up a wonderful conversation and become friends. He asks about your travels and would like to know if he may accompany you on your exploits. I think there's always room for one more. You return to his small shack to gather his things before you set off with your newfound friend. His name is Vodalian, Vodalian and he states he simply loves adventure. Awesome. Uh, allies. So he uses magic. Doesn't tell me what spells he uses, but that's okay. And I think he probably has a dagger as well. Cool. So now we're a party of seven. Ooh, let's take a look in here. You enter the town archives. An old, withered man with dried leather for skin sits perched behind a sturdy desk. He is scratching at some parchment with an ink quill. As you approach, he frowns and looks up with a furrowed brow. Shh! Yeah. You people make more noise than a herd of rampaging trollocs. He continues with a sour look upon his face. What is it that you want? We are very busy here. You may look around. But do not bother me unless I am needed. Fair enough. Let's have a look around then. Let's turn on our search feature. I 
think there was something around here. There we go. Anything special in the shelves? So it's a secret area, but it doesn't seem to have anything hidden away. <laughs> Standing in the town archives. Okay. Um, I don't think we have anything to speak to him about yet. We'll come back there if if a further quest requires us to. I don't remember much about these archives. Okay. Um, what's this one? You enter a massive building. It appears to be an endless maze of hallways and corridors. You enter an area that bustles with clerks and aides. They carry out their work with a self-important air. Some sit at tables scribbling furiously. Others struggle with armfuls of official looking documents and sealed scrolls. Okay. You enter the outer office of the city's head, head magistrate. Her assistant at the front desk is drowning in paperwork. He acquires about your business. So, you seek adventure. He informs the magistrate of your presence. You may see her now. You enter a spacious, well-organized office. The city magistrate is an imposing woman dressed in rich velvet robes. You state your desire for adventure. She asks you a number of probing questions. You detail your background and capabilities. She informs you. Some rather nasty business needs to be handled. If you wish to contract with me, I can offer you a generous sum for your services. There are a number of commissions to choose from. She considers her case files thoughtfully. Ah, this looks like a job that could fulfill your desire for adventure. She hands you a file to look over. Read this thoroughly. It details the assignment and your compensation. If you find the terms acceptable, sign and date the final sheet. Wow, everything's so official. Notorious blind wart Big Belly is wanted for the murder of Vladimir, a captain in the Royal Brigade. You'll be rewarded in gold talons through successful capture, or if you can provide proof of his death by your hands. Do you accept the commission? Yes, we do. Excellent. Big Belly regularly frequents a grogan mead house known as Newt's Landing. It's located in the northeastern part of the city. Careful, here's a tough hangout. Report back here when you have successfully completed your assignment. Okay, we've got our first quest. You come upon a shocking scene. You spy a small group of town bullies attacking an old woman. It would seem they are after a dagger she is clutching to her chest. Do you wish to intervene on her behalf? Yeah. The bullies do not have the stomach to fight and flee at your approach. The old bag scowls at you. Stay away. You can't have it. The dagger she's clutching is rather ornate and seems very likely to be magical in nature. What will you do? Hmm. I mean, I guess it would just be as bad as the bullies if we take the dagger. So maybe we'll just bid her a good day. As you walk away, she yells, Come and see me at my shop. I will give you a special price. She quickly disappears around a corner before you realise that you do not even know where her shop is. Ah, oh, well that's helpful. I'm sure we'll come across it eventually. You have arrived.
arrived in Bywater just in time as a winter storm has just covered the entire region in a thick blanket of snow. That was a very quick transition. Alright, I'm going to save. Whoops, that's not how. A man approaches you and speaks in a hushed voice. My aides have told me of the arrival of an adventurous band. Hear my offer before you leave. He tells the story of an evil man who has a stable of wild beastmen. The man asks if you would eliminate the stable of beastmen for monetary compensation. He offers you 400 gold pieces if you kill the foul creatures. Do you agree? Yes. Let's do that. The man gives you a map showing the location of a hidden cave just outside the town walls. Good luck, friends. I shall seek ye out and reward thee when the deed is done. Now, good day to you. Well, good day, sir. Okay, so it looks like just below the graveyard. Uh, You come upon an inn and cookhouse. The smell of hot meals and the sound of good conversation waft you from inside. Do you step inside? Well, it seems rather inviting. Let's do that. As you try the fare, the disappointment is king. The aroma far outshines the taste. Most of the food is very bland indeed. Some is outright awful. The cook approaches you. Well, good patrons, how is my fine meal today? Um, I don't want to get anyone off on the wrong foot. I'll just tell him it was delicious. He smiles a toothy grin. Ah, thank you, fine people. For a very special price of about 10 gold, I will let you taste this fine wine. He pulls a rather crusty looking bottle from a pocket and offers it to you. What do you do? Well, for 10 gold, it better be good wine. Before you drink the wine, you read the label. It is Bordeaux Sal La Salle, House of Charlingrad, Waterford, 1423. You mention to the cook that you believe the city of Waterford to be but a legend. Oh well, I guess not. I don't really know much about such things. I was given this bottle by Master Thew, the chief librarian across the street. The cook bids you good day and departs for the kitchen. What if now we mention Waterford? Waterford was supposed to be but a legend. I have discovered in my days of research, through volumes of forgotten lore, that it did exist. In fact, it lies through a secret cave in the mountains east of here. Only the best of wines were made there. I sought it out many years ago and have brought some wine back, but I have not been there in many years. The exact location of the city is lost to me. I only recall the way into the Grimwall Mountains. Another map. Let's take a look. This map shows the location of the cave that leads to the sunken city of Waterford. So somewhere, possibly on the east side, above a large body of water. We'll have to do some exploring. A wretched young gutter snipe runs up to you and begins crying out loud, so you can barely make out what he is saying. Oh, please help me, please, please. My dog has fallen into the old well and I can't get him out. Please help. What do you do? Of course we're going to go with and help. 
Oh, thank you so much. Come this way. Hurry, hurry. He leads you to the old abandoned well. At the bottom, you see a miserable little mutt covered in mud. The bucket for drawing water is so old it's completely useless. <laughs> the sides of the well are slick with green slime. You estimate it to be about 50 feet to the bottom. It is amazing that the mutt survives such a fall. Okay, so what can we do? Let's try an action. Not that. Uh, special. I think they have the best chance of an acrobatic act. Your attempt at climbing down the well has failed. You lose your grip and fall to the bottom. Now you need to be rescued as well. The boy bursts out in tears all over again. What have you gotten him to? At the bottom of the well you find an old rope ladder. It is very old but usable. You throw one end up and climb out. As you exit the well, the dog jumps out of your arms and runs off. The screaming boy is right behind. The town patrol waves you through as they hand you a map showing where you can provide provisions. You've walked into a tannery. Many fine quality leather goods are made and sold here. Let's go shopping. Ooh, a bow plus one. Twelve hundred. Definitely something to save up for. And another padded cloak. Maybe he could use a padded cloak too. Plus three, seven fifty, and two thousand for plus six leather armor. Quiver of protection, seven fifty. Okay. Oh, there's more padded cloaks. Who else could use one? There we go. Okay. I'm gonna. Oops. Saved, okay. You walk down the dimly lit passage, the odour of cheap wine intermingles with spiced potatoes. The raucous din of drunken patrons swells the close, musty hallway. A worn carpet has been stained by countless mugs of spilled ale. Patches of mould grow in dark corners of the room. The rotting remains of potatoes have been ground into the carpeting. Yuck. You enter a sleazy tavern known as Newt's Landing. The title suits this damp, dirty place. Only a newt would want to hang out with his friends in such a dump. 
In the back corner, near a large table piled high with roast mutton, a large orc warrior pounds down a crock of mead. He fits Bindwart Big Belly's description. A second orc notices your unveiled interest and points it out to him. All right, I think we're ramping up to our first fight. This is. Where is he? There we go. Large armed orc warriors crowd the tavern. The boisterous din turns suddenly silent. They all seem to be waiting for your next move. As you head towards Big Belly, an orc warrior steps forward and offers you. You head towards Big Belly. An orc warrior steps forward and offers to buy you a drink. The moment your attention is diverted, Big Belly bolts for the bar's back door. At this second, the path of pursuit is free and clear. Do you dash after him? Yes, we do. No one attempts to stop you as you rush after Big Belly in hot pursuit. You approach the tavern's back door and come to an abrupt halt. Big Belly stands in front of you, his back to a large stack of barrels. His gleaming sword is drawn. From behind you, several heavily armed orcs approach. Congratulations, it appears that with just a minimum amount of forethought, you have managed to wedge yourself between a rock and a hard place. Alright, let's see what he can do. Okay. I guess we're just going to attack. Okay, that's not going. Okay, let's see what we can do. Flame spikes, that sounds good. Do a magic dart. Yes, I can do that. This is hopeless.
Ha ha ha! Okay, so let's wait a while before we attempt that one. Um, let's do some more exploring. Actually, I might take a break there. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed this first episode. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. See you next time.